left the best for last because I now want to talk about hydrogen bonding. And the example on the slide is hydrogen bonding in water. So how does this arise? Well, oxygen has four valence electrons. So H2O forms bonds by sharing electrons between two hydrogens and oxygen. The result of this electron sharing is to pull probability amplitude away from the proton and towards the oxygen to form this covalent bond here, with the result that these look somewhat positive because the electron distribution is no longer symmetrical around the protons. In the meantime, one is left with this lone pair of electrons and this generates extra negative charge over here. So as I mentioned on the previous module, water has a dipole moment of 1.85 goodbyes. Now, the hydrogen bond is not just a, uh, an interaction between dipoles, although it can be treated as an electrostatic interaction and modeled that way. It's actually quantum mechanical. The hydrogen is light enough that one has to consider tunneling. And in fact, in a hydrogen bond, the uh, position of the proton is quite distorted from that in non-hydrogen bonded water. So what happens? Well, <clears throat> this oxygen, with this negative charge associated with it, and the hydrogens with the positive charges, tend to associate so that an oxygen was always facing a hydrogen, and so on. And the result then are these hydrogen bonds. Once again, the position of the proton is slightly moved towards this oxygen compared with what it should be in a free water molecule, and so the bond has some quantum mechanical nature to it. The result in water is to actually form a tetrahedrally uh, coordinated uh, network of uh, water molecules, and so on. Can't draw this very well. Um, and so water is a fairly tightly uh, linked material. Um, it actually turns out that hydrogen bonding in water gets somewhat diminished as the temperature is lowered, and so that at 4 degrees uh, Celsius, um, water is at its uh, densest and then uh, becomes less well hydrogen bonded as it freezes, which is why ice floats on water. A consequence of hydrogen bonding is that if one puts something into water that is not uh, soluble in water, that doesn't form any charge interactions with it, like a drop of oil, for example, it disrupts the hydrogen bonding of the water molecules surrounding it. This uh, increases the energy locally, and this energy can be minimized if, let's imagine, we have these two cages, which I'm going to show like this, of broken uh, water bonding, and then in here a greasy molecule, which I'm going to show like this, one can minimize this disruption by bringing the greasy molecules together in the water. So it looks as though there is an attractive interaction between the greasy molecules, where in fact it's the water molecules minimizing their free energy by organizing around the greasy molecules, eventually pushing the greasy molecules together. This is called a hydrophobic interaction, and it appears to pull water-hating molecules together. So let's return to hydrogen bonds, because I want to tell you one more thing about them. When hydrogen bonds gang up together, they can be incredibly uh, chemically specific in the way that they self-assemble structures. Let me take the famous example of DNA base pairs and draw you a couple of different uh, bases that pair together. These are the elements inside the double helix that come together to form the uh, connected groups that self-assemble one helix with another. Wherever I have a vertex, I am referring to a carbon, except for where I explicitly write in a nitrogen.
and then this nitrogen attaches to the rest of the DNA. This is the base thymine. Its partner in the DNA backbone is the base adenine. And let's draw the pendant groups here. We have a nitrogen here. We have an amine here. And we have a hydrogen here. And the point of attachment to the rest of the DNA over here. So this is adenine. Now the oxygen here, doubly bonded into the carbon, has a lone pair of electrons and therefore can attract a proton to it. We call it a hydrogen bond acceptor. The NH2 group looks a lot like water except being nitrogen there's an extra valence down here so the protons are donating electrons to these bonds and look positive so we call this a hydrogen bond donor. The same is true of the NH group up here. This hydrogen, hydrogen is now doubly bonded into the ring and because of donation of a electron to this bond this is also a donor, whereas this nitrogen that is bonded by three bonds into the ring, in the case of adenine, has a lone pair here, and it's a hydrogen bond acceptor. So look at the pattern. You have here acceptor paired with donor to form a hydrogen bond, and you have a donor paired with an acceptor to form a hydrogen bond. Notice that if adenine did not have a donor and acceptor spaced by just the right distance, and remember you can't flip this ring around, it's attached to the other part of the DNA helix, if it didn't have them in this order and in this spacing, the hydrogen bonding wouldn't occur. The other two bases, guanine and cytosine, form three hydrogen bonds uh, and are therefore even more specific in their non-bonded interactions or hydrogen-bonded interactions that hold this remarkable molecule together.